So my name is uh, Dr. KK, but my full name is Dr. Krishna Kumar Venkatachalam. Um, I have been working with Inago, our, our common brand, Gayatri, for the last 15 years or so. But before that, I was a surgeon. I was an orthopedic surgeon. And um, for uh, different reasons, some of which we will talk about, uh, I decided to take a sabbatical. I initially thought that it would be a one-year sabbatical, but it turned out to be a 15-year one, and it's still going on. Uh, so yeah, so I have uh, my background in orthopedic surgery, but uh, I started as a manuscript editor with Inago uh, in life sciences and healthcare um, uh, about 15 years ago. And since then, I've gone on to things like uh, training, uh, freelancer, uh, editor management and you know relationship, then a little bit of uh, product uh, development and research service development mm -hmm. within the brands, including some collaborations on publication support and Inago Academy, as uh, you know. And currently, I'm um, I'm uh, being uh, given a responsibility to uh, to manage and to promote innovation in under the brand Inago, and that's that's one of the reasons why we are working more closely over the last uh, six months or so. So that's a little bit about me, uh, Gayatri. Maybe you can introduce yourself because you have a storied career in uh, I think academy as well. I think that would be calling it a little bit too much. Um, let me give a little bit of background about my educational uh, journey because that's an interesting one. So I did my undergrad in India, but my master's in the UK. Then I worked in India for a couple of years in academia as a researcher. And then I did my PhD in the US. And after that, I'm back to India working with an agro brand. Uh, so I started my first job, I guess, at the age of 30 something. And that was a wake up call. Uh, nevertheless, I worked with publication support team, managing the client servicing aspect of it. Of course, having a PhD, I was also an SME. And mm -hmm. recently, I have moved to an agro academy as the managing editor. Mm -hmm. It's a very different dynamic. Of course, you're very used to writing academically yeah. during all of your research career, but uh, breaking it down in simple terms, that's difficult to do. Right. And of course, um, you know, finding the stories that interest people, right. um, that's a really big challenge. So that's where I'm at. So uh, one 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 uh, quick thing before we move ahead, I wanted to ask you about uh, the reaction in, in your you know peer circles regarding the Supreme Court ruling. Uh, how was how was it received, and uh, what do you feel about it? So I I have to preface the answer with uh, identifying the type of friends I have. Right. So I have right. a set of friends who are very liberal, mm -hmm. uh, who are very heavily involved in activism all throughout their life, uh, maybe not so much recently. Right. Uh, so there's that set and there's also the other set who just stay within the lane of science or whatever their current career is. I would say a vast majority of my friends seem surprisingly unaffected by it, which is quite unfortunate. Yeah, disappointing. Uh, yeah, very disappointing. And, um, I do have a set of friends who are active within the LGBTQI plus community. So obviously there it's a very different story and a different conversation. Um, you know, all of us felt in some ways that this particular Supreme Court bench may have been the well, most well placed in Indian history yep. to give a favorable ruling. So yeah, uh, disappointment. In different ways from both sides of um, the friend circle, if you mm. should, yeah. could say so. Yeah. What do you think about this? I mean, you're one of the few openly gay um, STEM experts I know in India. So, well, uh, I'm smiling right now and I'm wearing pretty clothes, but that's not what is uh, inside me. I'm extremely disappointed, uh, especially yeah. after. So, I followed uh, the day out. Like, it's, it's been what, two days, three days? And, uh, so yeah. So I was at uh, I was at work and I was in the office and uh, you know I had uh, YouTube on with the, with the mm -hmm. stream and um, if you remember the, there was there was a two sort of two hour sort of uh, uh, you know broadcast and the first one yeah. and a half hours was about uh, the C Chief Justice of India and all yeah. the other justices talking a lot of sense 
and you know if so we were all as in the, the, there are groups uh, you know which are whatsapp groups and everything that i'm a part of and we were talking about okay this is sounding good and we were very yeah. sort of hopeful and uh, we thought that the ruling is going to be in our favor and yeah. i remember being uh, you know uh, I, it was time for lunch and I, I was expecting everything to be positive and you know i then reading later that uh, the the bench had ruled three uh, two against uh, the you know the, the legalization uh, of yeah. uh, same sex marriage and it came as such a shock and it's obviously disappointing having said that you know i've been uh, in this uh, i mean i've been, i've been in india right? so so india is yeah. like this in india it, it takes a lot of time for things to change and at least yes. uh, as a democracy at least there is an institution like uh, the supreme court that where we can have these meaningful conversations and uh, i i think that these just the fact that uh, about one and a half hours of conversation from, let's say, the the highest judges in India, explaining yeah. the the rationale and how uh, such, let's say, legal and legislative uh, measures need to be taken to protect communities. And they mentioned a lot of things, including you know uh, things like uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the, uh, the heterosexual marriage and and the aspects of it. So a lot mm-hmm. of like background which should pave the way for same-sex marriage equality in the future and uh, so from that point of view I think I'm optimistic I'm hopeful that things will change and uh, you know it, it's for people like me uh, especially people like me to continue to fight the battles and it's just something right. that that's a setback that that's a hurdle and you know we'll be stronger and we will fight longer and eventually I'm hopeful that we will come you know we will you know come through and the, the efforts will result in same-sex Equality and social equality is what we are talking about. I mean, one of the leading advocates of uh, same-sex equality in India uh, was inundated with such atrocious uh, negative messaging from uh, everybody that I could think of. And the next day, I, I saw his uh, sort of complaint, and he he was he he was he couldn't deal with it. And he he wrote something okay. about it. It is too much for me to take all the hatred that is coming my way in, in, from his point of view and our way from you know our the community's point of view for such a thing and uh that sort of sort of made me feel that there should be more uh people talking about it and this is this sort of okay. a conversation that we are having right now is is so pertinent and this should be had and that's why i'm so happy that we are having this conversation so let's uh let's continue talking about sure. the very important topics yes so obviously you mentioned this particular leader receiving a lot of hatred yeah. um may i i hope you didn't have to go through the same experiences but does that in does his experiences i presume it's him it's does him. his yeah. experience mirror yours in any way or uh, how was your experience being uh, part of the community in and being in stem uh, in india Right. So uh, interesting. I mean, I uh, I would say that I was one of the luckier ones overall. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, the, you, they say that luck is some 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 parts made by you, as in the individual mm-hmm. themselves, right? So I believe in that a little bit. So I'll explain what I'm saying. Um, I came uh, I came to the realization that I was queer uh, maybe when I was in medical school which is a second year okay. third year of my medical which I, I must have been 17 uh, 18 19 then and uh, I was sort of bold enough to immediately open up uh, to my close circle of friends who I, I'm from Kerala Kerala is uh, relatively progressive at the same time for such social aspects it is uh, let's say I, I would say that it is not the most progressive place that you can mm-hmm. find yourself in then I chose to move to Bombay uh, from Kerala to Vandrup and uh, the reason why I did is partially because of the lack of social support that mm-hmm. I I had in Kerala. In the sense, I wanted to love a man, and uh, to love a man means to live with them, to have social, uh, you know, that, that sort of a social life. And it was almost impossible uh, in Kerala, at least at that point in time. In, and we are talking two thousand and the early two thousands. And the yeah. the negative experiences were not direct in uh, the hospital that I did my residency in, and it was more like uh, feeling excluded uh, for no reason. So you know, I don't, I didn't have a peer circle that I could share uh, at that point in time. I was in my first uh, relationship uh, with with a man, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, the the only sort of uh, group that I uh, sort of 
felt comfortable in sharing these things was a group of uh, psychiatry residents in the in, in the college and you know it's psychiatry is the farthest away from orthopedic surgery uh, that you can imagine in, in the hospital setup so uh, i felt like i need to belong and and i wanted okay. to find a place that would make me feel like i belong we need equity equality inclusivity for everyone regardless of what they are and how they think of themselves or what gender uh, you know yeah. they, that they identify with in all of those things so we are not talking only about lgbtqi in that context about inclusivity it's, it's about all thoughts of people with different languages different nationalities so that's exactly what crimson interactive and inago is i guess you you can also relate to that so yeah. uh, e within crimson interactive and inago i found a lot of space to express myself and eventually be a part of you know organization wide activities to promote uh, diversity e equity uh, and and inclusivity and that's something that i'm extremely proud of and some of the things that we are doing including this podcast is a testament to to what we've been doing and i'm very proud to be uh, a part of this brand and to to do such things so uh, this is in a nutshell how it has been for me so far but in terms of my gender identity uh, i i don't think and my sexual orientation i do not think i've had any uh, anybody in fact i've had only positive experiences to be fair uh, i still remember uh, so you know uh, imagine as uh, the people of our audience uh, who are listening and watching us talk about this imagine if you were to have uh to introduce your let's say significant other or a spouse uh to be asked to be uh, invited for a party and and you know yeah. you, you don't have any risk i mean i'm 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 talking about primarily the the majority heterosexual crowd right now right so you don't have to uh figure out how you're going to express your your spouse's or significant other's gender identity or gender or sex you know you you just say that right and yeah. um, you know i've i've gone through like hundreds of such instances where there is this one point that i have to sort of say that i have to bring somebody and uh, and that is you know of the same gender as me or do you know do you still have a community um, lgbtqia plus community within stem circles perhaps hmm. uh, do you you know how do you stay updated with what's happening what are the conversations like in india currently particularly in the academic space because right. i have to an extent felt a resistance to have open conversations about right. these kinds of um let's say even even at a philosophical level right. have these type of conversations with my friends from the academia right 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 so uh interesting i i don't particularly have a sort of a couple of networks or a strategy to sort of keep in touch with academia related uh, i'm just mm -hmm. like a regular guy i i have a group of friends and i'm generally on a reclusive side of things and uh, that's something that i think we can talk about in another because people who are let's say in the academia and especially who are right. let's say in the lgbtqi subgroups they have uh, mental health challenges more frequently yeah. than than others and and you know i i'm an open advocate for mental health as well and that's partially because i've i've been under treatment for uh, uh, depression for the last uh, last 15 years or so uh, approximately and this is a this is not something like feeling like low blues it is actually a clinical condition just like mm -hmm. let's say cancer or diabetes or something like that and you know you need a structured therapy you need a lot of work to be done to sort of uh to be productive to be a functional socially functional individual and mm -hmm. i have gone through that and uh, i it's it, it is a lot of work for people who support me and people like me who have to sort of support themselves so so i'm also an advocate and i i'm hoping that we will have more conversations about mental health yeah. in the future Definitely. so um uh, the the way that i keep in touch with things is by following the 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 communities you know, on all the social media platforms and wherever i get an opportunity to to raise a point or to to mm -hmm. you know raise my voice to support what i feel is right is what i tend to do and uh, you can also probably so i have obviously some some friend circles and maybe we can talk uh, about some uh, anecdotal experience that i may have uh, but uh, i also write right as one of the things that i'm yeah. passionate about is writing so as an advocacy sort of uh, you know from that angle i have been writing still on my blog but it's not as popular okay. because blogs are not a popular thing so what i'm hoping to achieve uh, in the maybe in the next couple of years and maybe going forward is to have more of a sort of a vocal visual presence 
uh, by video audio like podcasts and you know youtube right. and and all of those things i i've not been on social media the conventional social media for a while now that's partially because of um, my need to find a space for myself uh, in, from a mental health point of view not from an lgbt point of view. so you know, I, i will i'm planning to hopefully uh, you know uh, open myself up in terms of the, the 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 content that i can create and to support the community uh, in the at the academic level as well and also i plan to write about such uh, things i mean i'm hoping to contribute to uh, you know one some of the relevant uh, you know platforms where such things are discussed uh, one thing that comes up uh, comes to my mind is the scholarly kitchen i hope to uh, you know, to write something maybe you know we all should uh, write more on such platforms and uh, one one last thing about this thing so i about this point about academia right so i've been blessed uh, with opportunities to speak um, on behalf of inago uh, to okay. you know, uh, to conduct workshops on manuscript writing and research uh, the research process in its entirety and the publication related aspects so um, in those uh, so when i go to speak no um, i don't advertise myself as a gay individual open gay individual right. in india but but it's still a part of the communication that goes to institutions across the world wherever i get an opportunity to speak as well as in a uh, in a zoom webinar or a workshop situation as well so uh, people are aware of it and if there is a chance for me to uh, speak up because these are big platforms these are places where researchers are yeah. listening to somebody like me talk about yeah. what i know and if i get a chance i make make, make it a point to make sure that uh, you know i i say what i want to say so that people have some sort of empowerment they see somebody who is openly gay and who Absolutely. talk and and that and also maybe uh, you know uh, i also make it a point to have my gender pronouns my preferred pronoun mm-hmm. zoom and so that's so uh, if, if the, the conversations about this are the most important thing uh, that you can think of so if suppose you identify with let's say the community and not not quite belong to the community you are you are an ally to the community that's a key word if you find yourself to be an ally to the lgbt uh, lgbtqi a plus community please raise your voice please explicitly state how you support uh, the community right. and that will help a lot because there are many who do not know that these kind of support measures and platforms exist and just yeah. with the knowledge they will have a better sort of life just so that they they get the support so i hope that answers some of your points so um there are situations where people or organization or group mm-hmm. latch on to this one person who they know is out is willing to talk about it mm-hmm. is willing to vocally support the community and bring visibility but then it becomes somewhat of a burden because every time you are the person who is asked to mm-hmm. advocate or be the face of whatever yep. campaign or so on right right i mean i hope uh, you know what do, what tips would you have to navigate those conversations let's say or those situations for upcoming you know right. researchers corporate educators writers who are put in those difficult positions uh, where they do want to advocate but right. at the same time they want to you know do it within the space they are comfortable with and right, not right. exceed the capacity that they have for these kinds of engagements oh it's it's a loaded question we could have an episode <laughs> on this just itself but but let let me let me try to um, so the, the way i have uh, i think a couple of points to sort of expand on so one thing that you're talking about is the double edged sword uh, of right. this this exposure or the visibility that you're talking about right so right. on one hand somebody like me who wants to be recognized as me who i am mm-hmm. and i'm talking about not just me anybody in the community lgbtqi plus community mm-hmm. so because a lot of what we are are things that uh, uh, that we need uh, to belong in a society right human beings need to be in a society we are social animals and a lot of that involves aspects that touch our gender orientation and sexual orientation and right. identity etc right so when organizations just simply state that okay we are aware that there is there is a let's say a sub population of lgbtq and talking about academia or corporate institutions or yeah. organizations like us when they just say that okay you are cool as in you you are just like anybody else but that's where we are going to draw the line and nothing mm-hmm. more is there and that makes 
it a difficult place to be in or work right. in, etc. And that's constantly a thing that we also want, we in the sense as a community, I'm now talking on, on behalf of the community, we want to also be visible from that point of view. And the more that you make this visibility thing a priority in your organizational goals or institutional goals, the more comfortable the individuals are going to be. And I'm not yeah. asking in institutions to have pride marches. That's different from right. openly talking about these things and explicitly bringing up, uh, you know, issues related to marginalized uh, sub sub communities. I would Absolutely. say, and this is one such community. Once again, we are just not just talking about LGBTQ. Yeah. Any any sub community that is potentially marginalized or feels marginalized is can yeah. be talked about in the same um, in the same way. So once you once you create that environment, then you have more people coming in to sort of uh, advocate uh, to to be faces of the 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 activities and uh, advocates, etc. Cetera, et cetera. You mentioned that there should be more conversation. There should be more visibility. Mm -hmm. The conversation is there. Uh, that is a given, I suppose. As in any yeah. any social cause needs that. But I've been thinking yeah. about the other two points. One is you know uh, uh, do they commodify uh, this? Yeah. You know, uh, do organizations come out? And I, I, I would expect uh, corporate uh, uh, organizations to want to do that because there is obviously incentive because there is a lot of talent. If you did not yeah. know, right uh, to the rest of the world, uh, you yeah. are missing out on talent if you do not attract LGBTQI uh, community. Absolutely. And, um, and you, depending on the status, uh, statistics uh, that you want to lean on. There could be up to 50% of the population who are on the, uh, uh, you know, uh, spectrum, on the spectrum. Say. Yeah, okay. because because we are discounting uh, oftentimes bisexuality in this in the, yes. in the equation. There's a there are a lot of bisexual individuals in the world. So if you do not, if an organization chooses to not, uh, let's say, I, I don't want to use the verb commodify in this case, uh, if it does not want to state itself as an ally or uh, yeah. make it into a preferred employee employer situation, then you are potentially losing out on these candidates. And uh, yeah. that, and you can apply this to any uh, any enterprise, any institution for that matter, including yeah. I'm talking about universities and academia, yes. right? So you, why would you want somebody who is potentially equally talented as the, the Nobel Prize winning uh, researchers that you, you go around, to not want to work with you because they feel yeah. that they don't have the space, right? So, so from that point of view, it, the organizations do need to do this. Thank you, KK. That was once again a wonderful conversation, and I'm hoping there's definitely a part two, part three, part ten coming out. <laughs> in the I I thought that was a given. Uh, in fact, I was about to ask you. Look, uh, this is uh, I think the first time that I'm on the Inago Academy podcast, right? Yes. And I believe there's a the, the, that there are a lot more episodes that uh, yeah, uh, somebody absolutely. can. So can you tell us uh, more about the, the Inago Academy podcast? What sort of topics are covered? Sure. Where uh, somebody listening to this can find such conversations? So uh, we would, of course, be on all the social media that you can think of these days. There are quite a few. Uh, we, of course, can be found on SoundCloud, Spotify, Amazon, all the places where podcasts could be found. Um, we'll have, of course, all the details on our website. Uh, and the podcast is not narrowly focused on uh, very um, academic conversations necessarily, though we do intend to have a good mix of uh, conversations that are about researchers' journey and academic life and so on, but also associated, uh, you know, pockets of a researcher's life, be it mm -hmm. part of being part of LGBTQI plus community, mental health, um, women representation, what have you. So I think, uh, you know, we are open to any conversation really. Mm -hmm. And if anyone from the audience actually has a topic that they really feel very strongly about and they want to talk about it, they are more than welcome to get in touch with us, uh, tell us a little bit about what they want to talk about, be on the podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always good to have as broad a perspective of the academia as you can, no right. matter where you are, no matter what you do and which position you hold within that. So okay. that's a little bit about the uh, Anago mm. Academy podcast. Mm. Um, and how do yeah. they find it? As in, I know that you mentioned every platform. What do they search? What, they, what do they look for? 
they can of course find the podcast on enago academy's website we are going to have all the episodes hosted there but you can simply search for the podcast on any of the apps that you listen to um, the name would be research and beyond so simply mm-hmm. find us there and you would get access to all the episodes not just this one but the previous ones and the future ones